Hello, friends. This reading will be for those of you who um, resonate um, and identify with Aquarius, um, whether that is um, within your sun, moon, rising, Venus, or however you um, find yourself pulled to this reading. And I am coming forward with a general reading that will look into three aspects um, of the um, Aquarian consciousness. Please be aware that this is a general message that this is a general reading and that not all Aquarius people are moving through the same kinds of experiences. We all have different backgrounds. We're all different ages. We all live in different cultures. Uh, so please understand that this reading is meant to bring guidance and to bring um, thoughts and um, inspiration to you and maybe some foresight into how the future um, will will move forward, how you um, will experience the future. Um, but please understand that this is meant to guide and um, please do not make any life choices based on based off this reading. Um, but I do um, welcome you to use the information here to help you um, move forward um, as as part of your guidance package, as part of your tools in your toolbox. All right. Um, that was my introduction. Um, I'm going to go ahead. This is a reading that is going to look into um, finance and resources around you as we move forward. Um, we will not be looking at specifically stocks and bonds, for example, but into the general energy around money, finances, and resource resources. We'll also be looking at the category of health and well-being. And then we're going to be looking into love, family, friends, and romance. Um, these are very interesting times, and so I feel it's important to um, look at the future in all three of these categories. Um, all right, so let's just go ahead and get started here. Connecting in, just connecting in. Well, this, this group of Aquarius people have been really digging deep on how they feel about money, how they feel about the resources around them. The hermit energy is a Virgo type energy. And so um, there could be here some real focus on the details, on the budget. Um, it's, it's an energy, the hermit energy, when it, when it focuses in on money and resources, um, it's, it's, if you take the energy of a hermit, the hermit is taking a situation that happened or, or a, it could even be a lifestyle or it could be a, a long-term, um, way of thinking. What, whatever the hermit has experienced, there comes a point where, um, something happens in the life of the hermit and, um, this person or this group of people have taken an experience. They have wrapped it up into some sort of a, container and they've taken this container with them into a cave or into isolation or into their thoughts late at night and they've unwrapped it and they've looked at it they've looked at what's in this um, container whether it's a big box a huge barrel um, a truckload uh, a small briefcase whatever the size of this experience is they've taken it and they're and the hermit has just has dissected it. He has looked at all of the elements of it, right? This is the energy of the hermit of the Virgo energy. So if you take this and wrap this around money and you filter it over the top of money, this is looking at money. This is taking all that you have and looking at it in a different way. And, and it's not in a way that, um, that anything has been has been done wrong by you um, because we're not sure what the experience of the hermit is. I mean, that's going to be different for each and every one of you, but the hermit does um, look at the situation, uh, figure out what's happening, figure out um, where to go and maybe figure out how to do something differently because the hermit is a master walker. He's able to look at a situation, look at what his role is, look at what the roles of the other people are and move forward in a way that will create success in the future. So there is some sort of adjustment here. Um, and, and remember the hermit energy is not an energy that it can be bossed around by other people, right? That's not like there is, um, a, 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 um, a supervisor in the corner with a long stick, um, hit, you know, hitting you across the head. Um, I'm not sure why that's coming out. Goodness. Um, <laughs> but, but this is something that you are willing to do. This is something that, you know, that can bring, uh, um, a sense of, um, of greater success or, or a, um, 
more uh, inspired walk, right? And so it's it's something that you determine on your own, Aquarius, this group of you. It's something that you do willingly. It's something that you do because you're inspired to do it, um, because it stimulates the mind and it brings um, energies of, of excitement in that, that there is a, a, maybe a different way of doing it or a slightly altered walk that can bring in success. And I think when I get into the energy of the hermit, I think there is an energy of excitement around this, knowing that there is the Ten of Wands here, which is a, another another energy that we'll get into soon. Um, look at the Queen of Pentacles. She sits over the top of the Hermit. So this is what I mean. This is looking at details. This is narrowing your focus in and saying, okay, as the Queen of Pentacles energy, what do I need to do every day? What do I need to be to be responsible in this situation? What do I need to do to manage my finances? What do I need to do to make sure that I can um, be successful in the long run? Because if there's anybody that can be successful, it's the Queen of Pentacles. She looks at the details. She knows what's going on. She's an administrator, right? When you look at the, when when you look at um, the the dynamic between a supervisor and a, and a executive assistant, perhaps let's look at this dynamic. When you have an executive assistant working for an executive, right? The executive has a role. The executive, he or she has a role. Um, whatever their role is, it's an important role and it, and it really, um, is required if there's going to be a relationship between an executive and an executive assistant. But well, let's look at the executive assistant. Can the executive really get anything done without the executive assistant? No. Because the executive assistant knows how to do it. The executive assistant knows how to be, um, uh, move forward every day, looking at the details, making sure things get done, making sure that all the boxes are checked, right? The Queen of Pentacles is a, is a, is a, um, I'm not sure if there's a word for it, a valuable, a valuable part of this, uh, um, a priceless, a, um, a required aspect of life especially when the hermit is here and the hermit is here to look at money and finances. And the queen of Pentacles is all about the details, all about money, all about finances, all about making sure things get done. Um, this queen of Pentacles is, is responsible, is reliable, is hardworking, and will put one foot in front of the other until it's completed because the queen of Pentacles likes completion. She likes it. It fulfills her. She likes to get it done. Um, she might overwork herself, Right. These are two hardworking energies, Aquarius. The Hermit and the Queen of Pentacles are hardworking energies. And then we have the Ten of Wands next um, next year, which is the energy of feeling very overwhelmed, feeling tired, feeling like um, there there might be something here that's out of your control in a way. Um, the Ten of Wands in another deck, it shows a kind of a puppet where the puppet is behind a glass door. Um, and so these are kind of heavy energies, but it's also an inspiring energy. I think that you have, um, well, I am picking up on the passion here. Um, and that's maybe what I'm feeling here, Aquarius, but I think that you're finding answers here. You're finding ways of moving forward. You're finding, um, ways to be successful in this, whether it is your belief in yourself, your belief in your spiritual team, your belief in humanity, your belief that you can look at your situation and change it. Um, your trust in yourself. And then this Queen of Pentacles, which is an administrator in your life, the fragment of this hardworking, detail-oriented energy that really can push you through um, through this Ten of Wands energy, which is the energy um, as you move forward of just feeling tired and getting to the end of this situation um, that feels out of control to you. So remember, the Ten of Wands, is 10 is the last energy. 10 is the last number. So this is the ending of it. So it just feels like in the next several weeks, um, for this group of you, you will be getting to the end of this process where you're going to find some some help for yourself or some answers for yourself. And um, with the 10 of wands, remember what's the next number after the 10? It's the one. And if you're staying in the same energy with action and work um, and getting things done and, and thinking hard, so thinking hard, contemplation, and then taking action, um, the next number would be then... Um, the Ace of Wands, which you're getting close to here with the Page of Wands. So I, I think in the in the next few weeks, you're going to be finding answers and, and coming up with solutions for yourself that will help you move through this feeling of really maybe perhaps being out of control in life and, and feeling like um, the situation could be um, 
too hard to take. You know, the, this energy that you're swimming through now, um, I think that many people will find a new doorway or they'll find the end of the tunnel where they can step forward into a new, into a new type of experience or a new type of solution that will bring in a feeling of newness, a feeling of inspiration, a feeling of youthfulness, a feeling of new excitement and new enthusiasm for life. We also have the t six of cups here. So um, that, that talks about um, um, when you take the six of cups. Now, see, when I do these categories, I have to take these energies. It's no longer a general reading, is it? It's a reading that's focused on money. So I have to take these energies and filter it down over the top of um, finance. And so let me do that really quick because the six of cups is a water energy. And um, so I need to give me, give me a moment now to sink into the six of cups energy. You know, in, in, in a way there's an emotion around money, isn't there? There's an emotion around the stability that can come from money. There's an emotion around the experiences that we have when we go through trials and we go through troubles. There's an emotion around what money and resources can do for us and how it can make us feel because there is a, um, there, there is a realization now by this group of Aquarius is that there is a connection between the soul and money. There is a connection between the soul and stability. There is a connection between the soul and how we feel about how we can take care of ourselves and our families. And money is a tool to help us do that. And not just take care of ourselves and our families. If we have it, we can help in the community in some way with money. Remember, what is the first priority, and then the second priority, and then the third, and so on for you when it comes to money, because this is a connection now with the soul. And it's not really money, but it's the feeling of security. How safe are we in our lives? Do we feel safe? Do we feel secure? And the money and finance is a part of that feeling for many, many people. Six of Cups is an energy of love. It's an energy of emotion. It's an energy of family. It's an energy of the health of the heart and the soul. And when I get into this energy, it's a slower moving energy because to be honest, I've never connected money with the Six of Cups before. And now many of us, I feel, are connecting it with the Six of Cups. I'm connecting it here. And I feel like in the energy that there is a resonating energy here. So I know many of you are understanding this. Okay, I'm moving forward into the Page of Wands now. Page of Wands energy. New youthfulness. New excitement. A can-do spirit. So there's something here of triumph that's rising up from this hermit energy that blends with the Queen of Pentacles. There's a solution here for many people. And with the solution comes the feeling of inspiration, the feeling of newness, fire within the belly, which leads you to taking maybe perhaps new action, having new passion for something. There has been a stabilization here with a six. Something has found itself to be more harmonized, which is helping to build this flame within you again. The passion within you, the excitement, feeling of there's a new day. And by taking this new action, there will be, there will be changes that will be an improvement. Page of Wands. Could be messages coming in. Could have to do with youthful, youthful energies, youthful people. So I think it begins to end well here in the next few weeks. This is talking about the individual 
and how the individual energy can adapt and think differently and find solutions and understand in new ways and rebuild the energy center again. And this all has to do with money and resources. What do I mean about resources? Food, tools, equipment, gasoline, those things that we can hold and touch that can help impact and improve our lives, that can help solve situations. So this is an energy that is affecting the individual, it's affecting families, it's affecting our community leaders, our government leaders, and our world leaders. As, as we say as readers, these are energies that can filter down over large groups of people or over smaller communities or over the individual. Okay, I'm going to move now to health and well-being. Health and well-being, the focus of health and well-being. What do I mean by well-being? I feel like I mean, because I'm just a person, just like you, trying to understand these energies. I feel like it means how we are doing emotionally, how we're doing mentally with our thoughts, how are we feeling about our own stability, about our own enjoyment of life? How are we feeling with our health, the quality of food, the quality of sleep, the quality of experiences that we're having in our lives? And with health, um, I, I'm not going to, that, that is more understandable when I say the word health. So when we move forward here, I'm looking out over the next several weeks, we have the Wheel of Fortune that starts it off. So it looks like with health and well-being, uh, it, there's new movement here. What do I mean by new movement? Maybe perhaps there's new realizations, there's new learning, um, there's new um, activities that are being uh, stepped into by groups of Aquarius people. There could be new studies being released. There could be um, new information coming forward that helps um, find a, a center point for our health and our um, the way we feel about the world around us. I do feel like over the next few weeks there is going to be information that's coming forward, situations that are happening that are going to move this situation forward. Because what's hard sometimes is when there's no movement. Um, so it, it seems like there's movement coming in. There, th there are things that are happening. Um, when you look at the flu, um, and I'm not a, a doctor or have any medical knowledge really at all. Um, I'm kind of a doofus um, when it comes to medical information. Um, the, the, this tells me that, that when we have a sickness, um, in my own experience with having um, a, a really bad cold or the flu, um, you sort of know uh, what the what the steps are when you're sick. And you you know, for me, I usually get sick with a sore throat. Um, and then a couple days of sore throat, then I start having other symptoms. And, and for, and it's almost, almost like a welcome sign when the next set of symptoms come along, right? And so, you know, you just kind of have to get through this. You have to step through it and there's going to be a process in doing that. And that's the wheel. That's momentum. That's how things kind of move forward here. So it looks like things are beginning to move forward. And I think that on um, the wheel of fortune is, is an energy, almost like a judgment energy. It's an energy that can help cleanse situations. It's an energy that can feel good, even if it's rough, even if it could be challenging, it still feels good because it's, it's an, it, there's a realization that the wheel of fortune has to happen. New momentum has to happen. New experiences um, have to happen in order for things to move forward. So I think that's a good energy. We have the two of wands here now with health and well-being. And the two of wands is an energy of deciding um, what actions to take, what to do. Um, maybe it's, do I stay home? Do I go for a run? Um, do I go to the park? 
if I go to the park, do my children play on the playset or do they, do they not play on the playset? I think there's a lot of decisions here that are being made. Remember, the Two of Wands doesn't have to be a huge decision. It could just be a decision throughout the day of deciding, okay, which what do I do? How do I act? What decisions do I make? And what actions do I take? Do I do this or do I do that? Um, this could just be an overall energy of having to make many kinds of choices throughout the day um, that probably are are different than um, what you've really had to experience in the past or the, the decisions that you've made in the past. I feel this Two of Wands energy is not a huge energy. It's a it's a it's a more um, it do, it doesn't pull at me. Sometimes I want to go deep into the Two of Wands energy and clarify it and go down a rabbit hole with it. Um, go on a sidewinder, go on a, on a little trail that takes me off the beaten path. Um, but, but I don't really feel the need to do that with, today with this two of wands. I, I think it's a matter of, um, just deciding, okay, how am I going to do this? What is the best way to do this? It's, it's that you know that you need to do something. You know that you need to go to the grocery store. You know that you need to, um, get your medicine or or whatever it is that you're needing to do. And so there's decisions. How are you going to do that? What's the game plan? What's the strategy in it, right? It's a, it's a lesser energy. It's still here and it's still important. But I don't, for many people, I think um, it's, it's an energy that is pervasive throughout the day, perhaps. The moon energy is here. And this is um, looking at the future and not really knowing the future and, and really somewhat even being, um, a, a bit obsessed about the future and about what is not known. I think there's a lot that is not known here, Aquarius, and this can really be an interesting energy for you. Um, this could be an energy of learning, an energy of digging deep, an energy of thinking differently about it. I think in this, in this place for you, uh, um, Aquarius, the moon energy, um, sitting next to the high priestess, priestess and next to the two of wands, I think it's an energy of education. It's an energy of, um, having interesting ideas. It's an energy of having new conversations about the unknown and about what's to come. You see the moon is new. Um, there is an energy here on this, in this card of, of flowers and giving and, um, being inspired, um, seeing reflection, um, in this energy. The stars are here. So this feels, uh, for the very first time for me, um, Aquarius, I have to say this moon energy is an interesting energy to step into. It, it's a, it's something that, um, might create fireworks in the mind. Um, it might have some, might spark new thoughts. It might create new experiences that could be, um, quite interesting uh, for you, Aquarius. Then, um, so, so if we take this down over health and well being, um, we're talking about, um, the mindset of, a new experience, the mindset of um, the unknown and understanding that this is a new experience for so many people, a life, a life experience for so many people. And it is the experience that could be part of this energy. And, and again, this energy isn't um, knowing that, that this situation that we're in is going to affect people and it is going to affect people in a um, in traumatic ways, some people. And so we, we want to get into that energy just a bit as well, that there is an unknown and there are people. Um, so I'm going a little deeper into this energy. So the top energy, the, the shallow, more shallower energy, the energy that I first entered when I went into the moon is an energy of fireworks to the brain. Um, fireworks don't always have to be, um, <sighs> glorious they but they are fireworks they are something that really put the brain into action aquarius and i think that that is going to be something that's going to be quite interesting for you when i dig deeper into this energy there is an energy here of the unknown there is an energy of um wondering about the unknown because this will affect people and there are aquarians out there that are going to experience um within their family or within their circles um, the need to take action um, in ways that they perhaps haven't taken action before. For example, my father has lung cancer, and so I've had to think about him in a, in a completely different way and how this affects my mother, who also needs to, from my perspective, <laughs> think about her actions in a different way, right? And so all of a sudden, um, I have this, while I can look into the energy 
um, of this new experience and find it quite fascinating and think about why and think about all kinds of things around it. When I dig deeper into my own heart, I realize that my own heart is affected by the unknown and by the future because it could affect my father who has lung cancer and it could affect my mother who's elderly who doesn't know how to live without my father. And we don't know how life would be like without him as well. So it is a deeper energy that can affect that can affect the heart and it can affect how we feel and it can affect our well-being. So even though we are interested in this and we can find it fascinating, our hearts can hurt. They can be impacted. And so we have to understand that it, for for especially Aquarius who prefers to live in the mind that there is an emotional um, emotional toll that it takes on us as well, Aquarius. We do have the high priestess here. And the high priestess is um, the energy of belief, the belief in the higher power, the belief in one's own wisdom and one's own sense of self. The peacefulness that can be achieved but I, by connecting in with um, the higher power that we connect in with. Each of us has a different viewpoint on this and a different way we do this. But the high priestess energy is an internal energy of belief. Belief in the higher power. Belief in the self. Belief in the strength of the soul. Now the high priestess also is able to quietly do her work. She can quietly make things happen. She knows when to speak and she knows when to stay quiet. And oftentimes she can stay quiet. She can listen. She can hear what's going on around her. And when it's time to say something, she can say it and it will be listened to. Because silence of a voice is also a voice. And the high priestess understands that silence is a voice. So it's, it's the, it's the interesting dynamic between silence and speaking. And, and the high priestess understands how to, um, work with, with those two, with those two, um, qualities within her. So, you know, you, you could be more affected by this. You could have your own wisdom by this. You could understand that sometimes um, it's 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 helpful to express yourself, and in other times it's helpful to just keep that within. And the high priestess is able to keep it within. That's something she can do because she can communicate um, with herself. She can communicate with her higher higher power. She can connect with um, her own belief system in a way that helps her. Um, be able to live in the quiet energy. So it looks like these energies and these experiences are what's going to be here in this consciousness, this general consciousness that we call the Aquarius consciousness over the next few weeks. Okay, let's go ahead and look at love and family now. I, I say love and family because I've been doing this now. This I think this is my fifth reading I'm doing this week in this way. And um, it's, it's, there's a lot about family, I feel, when I do this. Let's see what comes forward now. Well, we have Ace of Swords here next to the King of Swords, next to the Nine of Pentacles, next to the Page of Cups. So with the Ace of Swords, this is an energy here of determination. It's an energy of strength. It's an energy of clarity of thought, having understanding. So as you move forward in the next few weeks, I think this, this group of Aquarius people are going to um, really have epiphanies. They're going to understand. They're going to have understanding, clear understanding of what it is for them um, that that inspires them, that gives them strength. What is the answer? Whatever is on your mind, what is the answer? Because there is going to be some kind of 
epiphany here and a, de a decision made and a strategy that is going to come forward um, that is going to help you find peace of mind and clarity of mind and it's going to help you make move make your movement forward this ace of swords is next to the king of swords here you are aquarius in a masculine energy um, this applies to men and women um, this is an energy of making decisions this is an energy of judging your not judgment not judging other people but making decisions and judging your own actions on how you're going to move forward. This is an energy of discernment. That's a better word than judging your own actions. Um, but we know that a judge in a court of law makes a ruling. And so this, these are going to be strong air energies, Aquarius, especially because we have the Ace of Swords here with the King of Swords. This is a very strong energy of finding clarity, making decisions, and moving forward with conviction. The King of Swords. King of Swords, again, just like the High Priestess, doesn't have to do a lot of talking, but um, finding clarity and making careful decisions is the uh, most, most important for this group of people here. Um, and the Ace of Swords next to the King of Swords. It's clear. It's clear. There's no wibble wobbling. There's no beating around the bush. There's no um, vagueness here. It's clear and it's strong. Next to that, we have the Nine of Pentacles, which is an energy of understanding your own strength, understanding how to enjoy your life, how to make choices that are going to bring in enough resources for yourself. If you take the Ace of Swords and the King of Swords and the Nine of Pentacles and you filter it over um, love, which is family, friends, and romance. I think that this is the energy of knowing who your family is, knowing who your friends are, whether they're people, whether they're animals, whether they're the trees and the plants that are around you, however you identify with your world around you, understanding who these elements are for you, making decisions in the best way for those realizations, having the strength to do what you need to do with the Nine of Pentacles to ensure your vitality, to ensure your choices are made in in the way that you feel best about them. So this is really um, living in your own strength and not allowing other people to make decisions for you that you feel uncomfortable about. This is a strengthening energy. When I'm in the energy of love for Aquarius, this is a strengthening energy. There's not a whole lot of softness here, Aquarius. There is some softness here with the Page of Cups, but the rest of these energies are strong and vivacious and protective and discerning and powerful. This Ace of Swords, this understanding about what is important is going to help you make important decisions about your life and perhaps around about people around you and family around you that are ultimately what life is about. And you will have the strength with the Nine of Pentacles to say things and to do things that are that come from a sense of groundedness because this is pentacle energies, a sense of sta stability and security in your life where you can have a single voice. And when you have this knowing and you have this ability to make discerning choices, you have the ability to say things in a way that will be heard and you have the ability to stand alone and say these things and do these things and be an example That's powerful. This is an energy, and I wasn't expecting this, Aquarius. I wasn't expecting this. This is a, a kind of love, isn't it? It's, it's a kind of love that sometimes we forget about or we don't notice. In a way, it's, it is masculine love, isn't it? I am in a more masculine kind of love.
Page of Cups. New inspiration. New enjoyment of this. There, there could be quite a lot of rewards that are reaped from this kind of a masculine energy. Burdens could be released. What happens when a father with fatherly love? Fatherly love can bring security. It can bring protection. It can bring, bring a feeling of safety and warmth. And from that energy can spring forward a refreshing, new, inspiring warmth to the heart, new joyfulness, new relaxation, new enjoyment of the world around, new love, feeling of love again, feeling of being inspired again. Look how the doves are here, two doves, flowers, spring blossoms, daffodils, relaxation, being in the moment. When we have this kind of foundation and this kind of security, it allows us to be free to experience our worlds in a different way. And that's what's going to happen for this group of Aquarius over the next few weeks. All right, my friends, I'm going to move into the extended where we will look at the people who are around you and, and what information comes forward about those people. And then we'll take one more step um, and look out uh, um, a mid-term or mid-range time frame at money and resources, health and well-being, and love. All right, thank you all very much, Aquarius. It's been a pleasure. I wish each and every one of you well. Stay strong, my friends. Stay strong. Thank you.